it's such um, a vibrant community. I think one of the reasons I joined it is I have two seventh grade uh, children uh, in middle school. And so I wanted to be in an environment where my kids were um, around a diverse community um, uh, in all senses of the word. So we have students um, from the US, 28% of our students are from the US. Um, we have 33% uh, students from, from Spain. And then the rest of our students are from 63 uh, other countries. And so we have kids who represent uh, various different continents uh, uh, from around the world and languages that come with that. So there are actually more languages than there are student nationalities uh, here on our campus. And we also have um, uh, a great deal of different, uh, great conversations going on in the hallways in different languages, but be between different religions as well, different political viewpoints. So our diversity really transcends nationality. Um, it's, it's very definitely um, about kids who are really into, into to robotics and engineering who aren't into the musical theater part, but some kids are into both. Um, and some kids are into musical theater, some kids are into the debate club. So th there's a diversity of, of things for them to get involved in um, and, and with that comes uh, an admissions where kids are coming to us because there's a lot of different things for them to do so by default we end up with this, this diverse group of kids. So all of our students do um, uh, take part in the IB diploma program from 11th grade through 12th grade and so one of the things that we have is a philosophy that 100% of our students will enter the diploma. For us, there's no pass or fail. We've got a very, very good rate of, of students going, um, uh, obtaining t more than 24 points, which is obtaining the full IB diploma. There are some students that um, take a different route. Um, it's not for them from an emotional and academic standpoint. And so they may uh, leave with a, an American high school diploma. All of our students leave with an American high school diploma. Some of them leave with a, a full um, uh, IB uh, diploma as well, um, having, having reached 24 points. And some of them um, will uh, have some IB courses, but not the full IB diploma, but that's very, very few students. And so what we pride ourselves on is, is that it's an inclusive program, that the IB, uh, uh, itself is a is a rising tide that floats all boats and that all students can be successful in it um, and so we have a very good um, uh, uh, philosophy I think about getting kids through through the diploma um, from uh, in ninth and tenth grade preparing the students for 11th and 12th grade as they as they graduate um, we have uh, we, we're just developing uh, a curriculum to enter into the the MYP framework so the middle years program and uh, John uh, John Kernis, who's our secondary school head, uh, and myself have a, an experience of working in continuum schools for, for many years. Uh, I'm, I've been here for a year and a half. John just joined this year, and we've decided that to take BFIS uh, to the next level to continue to upgrade, um, that the MYP is for us, and, and we very definitely value the interdisciplinary nature of it. We value very much the, the, the international mindedness piece, and it's a way for us to connect um, all of the areas of our school through the learner profile, through international mindedness, through the philosophy of the IB. So, um, uh, so that is coming online. And in addition as well, we're adding the Global Online Academy and Consortium relationship um, next year, which will mean that our students in ninth and 10th grade will have the opportunity in their elective block to take one of 53 courses through the Global Online Academy. Um, and, and those courses are everything from um, uh, AI uh, level one and two uh, to learning Japanese, uh, which will give our kids a different learning pathways uh, to take uh, as, as well as those that we can offer uh, in a school environment um, on, on sort of on a schedule uh, with, the, with the staff and the resources that we have. So instead of having a, a strategic plan, which would sort of traditionally schools had five year strategic plans, um, the, the world is changing so quickly that we've adopted a, a vision for learning, um, which is essentially our strategic plan, which is a three year um, agile uh, strategic plan, uh, which uh, started at the, the beginning of this year. It was a whole stakeholder um, input process last spring where we had parents and students we started with students we had every student in the school input what they valued about the school um, uh, what they saw as opportunities and what they thought were, were areas that we, we needed to upgrade and improve and we had very strongly the uh, three different pillars uh, one was experiential learning and especially from parents they were very interested in students having the opportunity to 
um, uh, to understand the world of work, to understand the world of, of industry and, and higher learning, and, and to understand now before they made choices about their futures so that if they were interested in architecture, they would understand architecture because as, even though Global Online Academy might give us the opportunity to, to offer an architecture course to students, that the, the understanding of what that looks like on the ground in the work environment uh, ha hadn't necessarily been there. And American schools don't have usually a, a work experience program, which we traditionally see in English schools. Um, so um, we've added, we are adding an internship program as part of our vision for learning um, because we heard from our parents, we heard from our students that they wanted more real world, world experiences. So the experiential learning is, is, is one of our major pillars. How does that relate to experiential uh, experiences for our little ones? Well, we, we've added experiential, uh, experiential learning through our forest school program, which we started this year. So we hired uh, when we understood that, that outdoor learning and, and, and forest school were, were really going to be on the cards for us. Last spring, I was able to preemptively hire a, an outdoor learning coordinator. So we have a full time person on staff who takes our kids out to the forest, the Colserola behind the school, um, and uh, we'll be building a, an outdoor learning program uh, with the Duke of Edinburgh's award and with the, um, uh, the opportunity for kids to climb and camp and really understand that the world is much bigger than them, uh, which we know is really great for their mental health, is really great for them to, to be able to build um, uh, the interdisciplinary connect connections and uh, create a great deal of happiness on the days of forest school. So when our little ones are coming out, they say, we should do this all the time. Um, can't we have all our lessons outside? Um, and so they don't they don't understand that learning, but the, the forest school program is, is one of the ways that we've, we've brought the experiential learning into, into the lower grades. We also have our creativity uh, and innovation, and, and part of that is, is more long-term in building a new center for creativity and innovation. So next summer, we'll break ground on a new building, which, which will be just that, the center for creativity and innovation. We'll have new robotics lab, uh, new design labs, um, but we'll also have a new music room and, and valuing the idea of design and art um, and performing arts and that creativity and empathy and risk taking um, that, that happens in those environments, um, that happens when the students are, are able to um, explore that avenue in conjunction with the fact that, you know, just next door or adjoined is is the robotics lab. The, the two things we think will come together to, to allow students to, to be better problem solvers and our our goal in our vision for learning is really to have kids go out into the world and make it a better place and to be problem solvers in their own lives and in the lives of other people and to be able to collaborate while doing it. And so um, the, the, the final uh, pillar that, that, that we have is, is individual potential. It's it, to what degree are we nurturing students so that they can find their own voice, so they can find their own uh, voice and choice. And, and you can see some of these uh, areas overlapping as we innovate um, and we change our programs the Global Online Academy will touch the, that voice and choice for some students. Um, the MYP will touch uh, a change in the way we assess students from an A through F system to a one through seven system, where students um, clearly understand a criterion based um, way of, uh, of grading. So the feedback is richer for students to, to, to grow, to reach their individual potential. And then our little ones are no longer being constrained to a, a scope and sequence that a, a member of staff has to go through. We're really looking at inquiry based learning, at maker learning. So I just walked along the hallway in the elementary school to look at a third grade um, project that they've been doing on uh, what are the uses for a box and can we be innovative around uh, how, how you use a box. And they've tied that to mathematics, they've tied that to their um, their literacy curriculum through the books that they've read, some great boxes, uh, books about what to do with a box. It's not a box and so forth. And um, and along, along the wall, instead of uh, what you might have found you know, uh, many years ago in education, where you have lots of nice pictures that all look the same because the kids have all, all, all reached the same uh, outcome in terms of, of prompt, albeit slightly differently. We've got a learning journey displayed along the, along the hallway, which shows uh, how they started, what their thinking was, what their inquiry was, what research they did, how they prototyped their final ideas. Some of their prototypes are up there and, and then what their final products are and then what they learned from the process. So those things are really expanding uh, the opportunities uh, for our kids. And it's the vision for learning that's driving that and underpinning the changes. 
So, you know, several years ago, I think schools talked about gifted and talented. And I think the, the change in our philosophy has been that, that gifted and talented is everybody. Every, every kid has, um, has, is passionate about something, um, is talented in some area. Um, but there are also kids who are, 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 we need to acknowledge that, who are accelerated learners. So we have kids in seventh grade who are capable of being a 10th grade math class and flying. Um, and so what do we do? Do we move them into 10th grade and have them do 10th grade math? Or do we change the way that we teach math? Do we change the way that we simulate them? So instead of, 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 of putting them in 10th grade math where they'd be better mathematicians, but then they do the 10th grade math and then they need to be 11th grade um, and taking them socially out of uh, a place where they, they would need to be. It's really, that's a, already a long rubber band for that child. What is their short rubber band and how do we how do we stretch that short rubber band? So how do we put them into situations where they're forced to use that math in a different way to solve problems? And so we hired a differentiation and enrichment coordinator and, and we didn't call in the talent and development coordinator. And she is uh, she has a relationship um, with families after doing um a, a sort of tiered assessment of a student and understanding how do they learn. Um, when we get a referral, it's not just for a student who has learning support needs as we would traditionally think about them, perhaps dyslexia or perhaps they have um, uh, some other learning, uh, learning support needs, that these are students that have learning support needs too. And we need to assess their needs because they're all very different and they're not just gifted and talented. They're not just all good at math or good at uh, literacy, uh, reading at 11th grade level when they're in sixth grade. Um, that it's it's far more complicated than that. So they have individualized education plans just as any other learning support student would have. Um, and uh, she coaches teachers uh, to work with those students in the classroom to ensure that they're not just being given more work at the end of the class uh, when they've got through the other work, that that they are they're working on more independent projects, uh, more inquiry-based, um, uh, uh, outcome-based uh, uh, work, as well as doing the core work that they need to do because some of these kids are great and they might be doing 11th grade math, but they're not jumping through the hoops that they need to in seventh grade so that when they get to the 12th grade math, actually that might become a problem to them. And what we hear from kids who are accelerated learners is that being in what was a traditional gifted and talented program meant that they hit the ceiling at some point where they'd missed something in their education and that 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 they that they were tired of being gifted and talented that they that they 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 didn't know how to do their working or they didn't that they, they weren't able to do it in the head anymore and actually the gifted and talented program was hampering them at some point in their career so really taking that into account taking into account their emotional and social needs because many of the accelerated learners um, have different social and emotional needs to, to, to other kids. She, she runs passion projects on a lunchtime and now we have, sort of, I, I, I walk into there and there, there, are, there are 40 middle school kids on the middle school uh, days who are doing passion projects and it's, it's, it's frameworked, but it's very open-ended. They're in the maker space uh, working with, 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 with our uh, differentiation arrangement coordinator. And it, it's a difficult position for me to hire and, and expand in because I, I, I'm trying to find an, uh, more professionals around the world who have this philosophy um, and, and, and break out of that that gifted and talented um, uh, box and, and it really crosses over with some of these other things that we're talking about in the vision for learning as well um, because if we're doing things differently in the class we should be um, if we're teaching well we should be um, challenging those kids on a daily basis just the same as we're challenging the other students and that's one of one of the other reasons why we're taking on the the my So we have, um, uh, we, we were an American school uh, and traditionally um, uh, the school has not focused on athletics. We, we were a fairly urban campus, even though we're right next door to the Colcerola, which is this beautiful forest behind, behind the school um, at, the, at the very edge, but very accessible to the city. Um, uh, we haven't had our own gymnasium. Uh, our students have uh, uh, walked five minutes to Cancarella, which is this wonderful, um, uh, a physical education um, activity center where the kids have exposure to uh, a, a proper gym, they have exposure to uh, uh, a football courts and, 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 and paddle courts and, and, and squash courts. So it's, it's a professional facility. But I think there was in, in the school's past a, a feeling that we weren't an athletic school. Um, and since I've joined the school, we, we, we've really focused this um, on okay, what can we do? And now we have 11 teams, um, and last year we had none, um, in the leagues, in the local leagues. And so we're building team, um, team spirit. So um, actually, uh, 
uh, we are the BFIS dragons. And now you see folks wandering around the school with their, with their BFIS uh, dragons sweatshirts on. Um, and we have 11 teams competing weekly in, in a league. So very much more like an American school, but just like a Spanish school, a Spanish uh, league for volleyball, for soccer um, and for basketball are very strong here. So we play uh, not just international schools in, uh, in tournaments um, uh, infrequently during the year, but we train. We also train every week and uh, our kids are playing a game a week, which is, is, is really, really um, fun to watch. I feel like I'm back in, a, in the United States again. I spent, um, I spent 16 years in Atlanta. And so um, that, that culture of being an American school is, is, is sort of baked in. Friday night football, Friday night volleyball here, Friday night basketball here. And, and many of those games are, are happening here on our campus because we do have two full, full size um, basketball um, uh, or volleyball courts. My favorite part of the school day is standing on the crosswalk in the morning and in the afternoon and just saying hello to everyone and, and having, uh, when I first joined the school, we were wearing masks and it was really hard because uh, you, you, you had developed, I had developed a different way of interacting with kids at, at that time or with staff at that time, uh, sort of changing your eyes and you, you become much more expressive with your hands. Um, and I'm still that person. I have, that hasn't gone. So here I am on the crosswalk every morning uh, saying good morning to people. And I think I should put my hands in my pockets because I'm, I'm kind of waving them around too much on my, my smile is so big that like, you know, maybe my face is creasing too much, but I really do love it. It's, I do it every morning. And I think many heads of school around the, around the world do, but it's, it's my wellness check as well. It's my way to say, Hey, is everything okay if someone's walking past me and 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 then and or if they're late um hey you know is everything okay and, and the same goes for the staff and 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 then you know i've got to the stage now 18 months in where where i know a lot of the kids names like my, my goal is to for my kids to graduate from the school so they're seventh grade right now and when they do i think um <clears throat> i should hopefully uh the same as the school i was i was in for the five years prior to, to, to being here, know almost all of the, the kids' names, um, which is which is tough to do. But in school of 700, it is the advantage of, uh, of having a, a bit smaller school because it, it's, it's really important to know kids as an individual. Um, so that's, that's my favorite part of the day.